Alright you mates, welcome back and now that we have Wireshark downloaded and installed we're gonna start figuring out how the heck to use it. It looks kind of overwhelming at first just because there's so much stuff going on especially when you start capturing traffic but I'm gonna be breaking down the interface showing you guys what all the different pieces do what ones you use, what ones you really don't use that often and uh, yeah enough of me talking let's go ahead and get started. So the welcome screen Whenever you first start Wireshark, you're going to have this screen right here. Now, a lot of these, for example, whenever you start capturing traffic, then all your recent project files are going to be right here. This little section will actually take you to the website that I showed you guys in the last video. So if you just want to look through some um, traffic that other people captured and uploaded, maybe you're curious about um, a specific uh, type of network or something like that, then you can download the sample files from here. Also, they give you some other links like to their website's homepage, uh, user guide, and some other help sections as well. The main section that we use from here is this one right here. So these are all the capture settings. So we can either capture our own traffic. However, if you did download one of those sample files and you want to review that, then if you just go to File, Open, then you can choose whatever file you downloaded. So this was the HTTP one that I told you guys to download, but I'm not gonna open that because I'm gonna show you guys how to capture your own traffic. So in order to start listening for the traffic on your network, you first need to choose an interface. Now, depending on how your network's set up and what NICs you have installed on your computer, this section is gonna be different for everyone. So this is my main Nick and right now I'm just sitting at a regular desktop and I have I believe it's on board um, it came installed on my motherboard but if you guys have like other wireless cards that you bought then they're gonna pop up here too you guys probably won't even have these because I have virtual machines installed on my computer and whenever you install a virtual machine then it comes with a virtual um, interface but just select your main one whatever it is for your computer and then you you can hit start. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, this is how I'm connected to the internet. Start listening for traffic on that network. Now, as you can see, I'm not even going to any websites or anything like that. However, I do have a browser open. So it's doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. And that's what's kind of amazing that people don't realize is that whenever you're just like this, all right, got nothing going on just you know looking at my desktop your computer is doing a lot of crap as you guys can see so I'm just gonna go to some other site and it doesn't matter what sites I'm going to right now so open a browser and start you know go to like two or three websites and then come back here and click stop now let me pull this back up don't mind what I'm doing right now this is just because I was playing around with this before this tutorial but you guys are gonna see basically something like this now just a real brief overview and I'll talk to you guys about everything in detail but of course this is your main menu bar up here these are commonly used tools this is so you can filter specific packets and down here as it was pl pretty clear whenever you start capturing traffic or packets they're all going to pop up right here. So the more people that you have on your network and the more websites that they're going to or whatever they're doing, the more packets you're going to have. If it's just you, then you know they probably won't be coming in that fast. But if you just want to cycle through these and you can just click on the different ones or press up and down, then you can see all of the different packets that are being transferred over your network. And if you guys don't understand what any of this crap means, then don't worry. Like I said, we're going to be going into everything in detail. I just want to give you a real basic, broad overview of the interface right now. So whenever you click a packet, then of course, you're going to be able to look at more information about it. Now, this middle section right here, this is information about your packet in human readable form. This bottom section we really don't use that much because this is just the bits view and actually if you right click this and choose bits view so this is basically how your router and your NIC card are going to see 
you know, the pulses of electricity. That's why I said it's not really useful. Not that it's not important, but, you know, we can't read this. So to us humans, we really don't want to see it that much. So we are usually going to be looking at the individual packets and the information in human readable form. And if you just want to hide this section down here, then if you go to view and uncheck packet bytes, then it's going to hide it right there. So if you ever want to hide some of these sections, then the packet list is the top one. The packet details are details about that individual packet in human readable form. And of course the bytes, if for some reason you like looking at the ones and zeros, then boom, there you go. Now another thing that people like to do is maybe they, let me pop that back up again. Maybe they actually want to see this and they want their layout arranged a little bit differently. So maybe you want all the packets on the right hand side and the details on the left hand side. Maybe that's a cool layout. So if you go to edit preferences, these are your main Wireshark preferences. Now I say Wireshark because there isn't too much information about the actual packets and information. This is pretty much just for the Wireshark environment and the colors, the layout, how you want your sections arranged, all of this stuff. So if you click a layout right here, then you can just choose a really general layout. So how do you want all your sections organized? You can actually choose to, you know, not even display one at all. And you can also choose some other stuff as well. Maybe I'll show you guys. So you see in the packets you have a number which is pretty much just the ID, the time of the capture, the source, where it's coming from, where it's going to, you know, the protocol, a bunch of information. If you're like, you know what, I really don't care about uh, this time that much, you can actually uncheck that and then that column will be hidden. So pretty much like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit apply. Not okay. So if you just ever want to control, maybe hide some stuff, maybe show some stuff, organize your layout, then you can go there and you're going to be good to go. Now one last thing that I'm going to recommend doing, let me hide this, is this. So if you go to view and then you go to name resolution, make sure that you have this enabled for Mac layer. So you know whenever you have a Mac address, it's it pretty much looks like a bunch of weird numbers. Well the first section of your Mac address is actually there to identify the manufacturer or the distributor, basically the company that made your network interface card. So if you have this enabled, then it's gonna take those numbers and translate it to the company's name. So that way it's gonna say something like, all right, so right here, like Asus or Asus, whatever. So they made uh, this NIC card. So that's why instead of having a weird long number like this, you can actually see it. It just says ASUS and uh, I don't know. I, it's just a little bit more helpful to me at least. So it takes this weird number and translates it for the name. However, what you probably don't want to do is you don't want to resolve just every single name because if you start trying, trying to pretty much translate all of these IP addresses, then what it's going to do is it's going to try to connect to a DNS server every time and then you're going to have a lot more traffic kind of unnecessary traffic that you really don't care about. So I know I'm kind of overwhelming you guys already, but get your layout how you want it, arrange, you know, all these panels, all these sections, display the ones you want, hide the ones that you don't want. And once you got a decent feel of the environment, then we can move on to the next video where we are going to be talking about the capture settings.